In this video, we will discuss the problem that is longest subarray with some k. The problem says that will be given an array which will be consisting of integers and will be given another integer k. Our task is to find the length of the longest subarray where the sum of the elements is equal to the value k. If there exists no subarray, then we need to return 0 in that case. So let us discuss the first test case here. So the first test case that has been given to us is 10, 5, 2, 7, 1 and minus 10. Now if you see this test case, so the subarray 10 and 5, the sum is equal to k here and the length of this subarray is basically 2. Now another subarray which is having the sum equal to k is this particular subarray. If you will consider the subarray which is having the elements 5, 2, 7 and 1. This subarray also has got the sum as 15 that is k and the length of this subarray is 4. But another subarray which is having sum equal to k is this whole subarray that is the complete array which is 10, 5, 2, 7, 1 and minus 10. The sum of all these elements is equal to 15 and you can say that the length is 6. So the longest length here is coming out as 6 here. I hope you are clear with this. Now how can we solve this problem? In order to solve this problem, the first way is that we can try to generate the sum of all the possible subarrays and we can try to identify the length here. Now understand one thing, suppose that if I am standing at a particular index, let's say if this index was 1 and I am at this ith index here and this index was my jth index, let's say 2, 3, 4 and this is my jth index. So how many elements are there from this ith index till this jth index? The number of elements or the length of the subarray is basically j minus i plus 1 here. Why? Because if you will see here, so 4 minus 1 plus 1 will give me the length as what? 4. And the total number of elements in this subarray is basically 4. So any subarray that is uh, starting from the index i and ending at the index j will have the length as j minus i plus 1. I hope this makes complete sense. Now, if you will see here, how are we going to try all the subarrays here? So, what will happen here is, initially my i will start from 0. So, I will start from here and we'll try to explore all the subarrays starting from this i. So, we'll explore the subarray 10, then 10, 5, 10, 5, 2, 10, 5, 7, 10, 5, 1 and then 10, 5, 7, 2, 1 and minus 10. Okay, so this is how we'll explore. Next time my i will be here. So, we'll explore all the subarrays starting from this i that is 5, 5, 2, 5, 2, 7 like this. So, what will happen here is we need one variable i which will be starting from 0. So, you can say that my i will start from here and my j will be here as well. So, initially my sum would be how much? You can say that my sum will be only this element that is 10. Okay, now it's not equal to k. My j will move forward. Now, I will consider the subarray that is 10 and 5. Now, the sum will be how much? The sum will be 15. Is it equal to k? Yes. So, since the sum is equal to k, so I will store the length. Length will be j minus i plus 1. So, the result will be storing the length as 2 here. Then after this, my j will move forward. And now, my j will be here. The sum will be equal to basically nothing but 17. Is the sum equal to k? No. So, my j will move forward. Now, my j will be here. Now, after that, my sum will be what? When I take this particular element as well, sum will be 24. It's not equal to k. Then, my j will move forward. j will be here. I'll consider the subarray from 10 till 1. The sum is going to be 25. Is it equal to k? No. I'll ask my j to move forward. Now, my j will be here. Now, you will take this element as well. The sum will be basically 15. Is it equal to k? Yes. So, the length is what? The length is j minus i plus 1. j is standing at 5. i is standing at 0. 5 minus 0 plus 1 will be 6. So, the result will be updated to 6 here. So, this is how we have explored all the subarrays starting from the very first index i is equal to 0. We explored all the subarrays. Then after this, when the j gets exhausted, I'll ask my i to move forward. i will be here and we'll explore all the subarrays starting from here like 5, 5, 2, 5, 2, 7, 5, 2, 7, 1 and 5, 2, 7, 1 and minus 10. Like this, we'll keep on updating the sum and whenever the sum uh, is equal to k we will check if the length j minus i plus 1 if the length of that subarray is greater than the result we'll update the result now this would take order of n square time because we are going to run two loops one is the i loop another is the j loop to explore all the subarray sums here let's have a look at the code here you can see here 
what I'll be doing is I'll declare the resultant length initially as 0, the final resultant length, and I'll start my i from 0 until the length of the array. Initially, we'll declare the sum as 0, then we'll say that uh, we'll start our j from i until the length of the array. We'll keep on taking the sum of all the jth element, and if the sum is equal to k, this means that the current subarray from the index i till the index j it is having sum equal to k. So I should consider the length as j minus i plus 1, and if this subarray length is greater than the result then I'll update the result as a subarray length j minus i plus 1 and I'll store the maximum value of j minus i plus 1 in the end we will return the result here since you can see that I'm running uh, two loops nested one inside the other so the time complexity of my approach is going to be order of n square and what will be the space complexity of my code it is going to be basically order of 1 the reason being because I'm not using any extra space here but this is very costly because I'm generating all the subarrays so I'm taking order of n square time can we optimize this a bit more yes we can optimize our approach using the hash map and prefix some approach but before that let us discuss one concept here suppose that if i have this array let's say this is the yellow array that i have i'm not writing any elements here but suppose this is the array that i have and now in this particular array that i have let us say that i have generated a particular sum let's say till this point i have generated a particular sum let's name it as sum so far from the starting till this point i have generated this much sum here now if what happens is if i will check and uh, i am able to find that sum minus k was already seen if the prefix sum sum minus k was already seen this means that in between the sum of the elements would be equal to nothing but k in between the sum of the elements in this subarray would be equal to k okay so what do i mean by this basically let us say that if my sum is something like let's say if my sum is equal to 33 at this point okay uh, let's say if at this point my sum is equal to 33 and sum minus k is present sum minus k is already seen now sum minus k would be what sum minus k so sum minus k is basically 33 minus 15 which is basically equal to nothing but 18 here if the sum 18 has been already seen then this means what this means that in between the sum of the elements in between the sum of the subarray elements would be equal to k that is nothing but 15 okay so this is the main uh, logic that if i am currently having a particular sum and sum minus k has already been seen as a prefix sum then in between the subarray sum would be equal to k and i can consider that subarray now how will i find the length so if i'm at the ith index so i'll store the index at which i had found the sum minus k sum okay and i'll take the difference that would give me the length of the subarray that is having the sum as k okay now let's try and uh, apply this on the given test case here so suppose that we have been given the test case that is 10 5 2 7 1 and minus 1 now what will happen here is we need to have a map so that we can easily check whether sum minus k is already present or not so what will happen is inside like firstly we have the sum like we will find the sum now as of now the sum is equal to what the sum is equal to 10 i'll check is 10 minus 15 present in the map no minus 5 is not present so what i'll do is inside the map i'll put 10 with the indexing as 0 now after that next time my sum will be 15 okay so since uh, i'm getting the sum as 15 it is equal to directly k so since the sum is directly equal to k so i'll say that in my result i'll store what i'll store length as i plus 1 because if the current index is 1 so the subarray length is basically equal to 2 because we are starting the indexing from uh, 0 so that is why the result will be equal to 2 because if the subarray till index 1 is having the sum as k itself sum as 15 itself then the length of the subarray will be i plus 1 here so we'll update the length as this much now after this uh, what we will do is inside the map we'll update the sum as 15 with the index as 1 now after this what will happen is my sum will be 17 now inside the map i'll check is 17 minus 15 that is 2 present in the map no so i'll say that okay let's update this sum as 17 in the map with the indexing as 2 now after this next time the indexing will be what next time if you see so i'm at the index 3 the sum will be basically equal to nothing but 24 so i'll check is 24 minus 15 that is 9 present in the map no so in the map what i will do is with respect to 20 4 i'll update the sum as nothing but 3 here now after this what will happen uh if you will see further so my sum will be 25 now the moment my sum is 25 i will check is 25 minus 
15 that is 10 present inside the map yes 10 is present inside the map some minus k is present inside the map if some minus k is present this means that in between the sum of the uh, sub array elements is basically equal to k here so what is the length here you can see this length will be i minus the index at which the element 10 is present the index at which the sum minus k is present so basically this is 0 n is present at the index 0 and the current index is 4 so 4 minus 0 will give me the length as 4 because there are 4 elements that are making up the sum as k here so that is why what we will do is we'll update the result with this length that is 4 here and inside the map what i will do is i'll update the sum 25 with the indexing as 4 here now after this what will happen is we'll proceed further and now my sum will be equal to 15 now the moment i reach this sum as 15 so the sum is itself equal to k so i'll update the result as i plus 1 since my index is uh, 5 right now so the total number of elements till this index will be i plus 1 because i'm starting from zero index so the result will be updated to 6 and then we end the iteration here so there are two things either the sum itself can be equal to k either the prefix sum it's uh, prefix sum itself can become equal to k or what can happen is if i'm having a current sum uh a current prefix sum and uh, sum minus k is present in inside the map then this means that in between the sub is having the sum equal to k and i can try to check that length if that length is greater than my result i'll update my result here now this will take linear time because i'm going to iterate throughout the array only let's have a look at the code here so you can see what i'll be doing is i'll declare a map first of all for storing the sum and the indexes with respect to the sum then i'll update my result as zero then i'll update my prefix sum initially as zero this is the sum variable that i was considering in my dry run then after this i'll take the sum of the ith element and i'll check if the sum itself becomes equal to k then the result will be updated to i plus one because if from the starting till the ith index the sub array sum is equal to k then i'll update the result as i plus one here otherwise i'll check that if the current sum prefix sum minus k is present inside the map then i will check that if this length that is i minus the index at which this sum was present sum minus k was present if that length is greater than the result then update the result and also i need to store the very first occurrence of the sum inside the map because i want the longest length so i'll store the very first occurrence if the sum is occurring for the first time in the map if it is not there in the map then i'll update the prefix sum inside the map or update the sum inside the map with respect to this index i at the end we'll return the result here now the time complexity for my code will be nothing but order of n because we are going to iterate throughout this whole array so this will take order of n time and the map is going to help us solve this in constant complexity it will find the sum minus k in constant time the space complexity will be basically order of one sorry order of n because we are going to use a map data structure in order to store the sum along with the indexes here now let's submit the code and check if it is getting accepted or not so we have written the code let's try and submit this it should get accepted hopefully so you can see that our code was able to pass all the test cases thank you for watching this video and keep coding